Welcome back. In this video, we're going to solve the following least squares problem, which comes from a linear regression resulting from collected data studying Ohm's law. Please pause this video and read this problem fully. Now that you've read this problem, let's get started on our least squares solution. In this problem, we want to find a linear model to represent the voltage and current relationship through the resistor. In other words, we want to find the equation for a line, we'll call it V of I, which will set equal to R times input value I plus B. In this case, the output V of I represents the voltage drop across the resistor. The unknown value R represents the resistance measured in kilo ohms in this problem. I represents the current running through the resistor and B represents a possible Y intercept for this linear model. In this case, our output is called V, so it's really the V intercept. In this problem, we have seven data points, each given as an ordered pair, I sub K comma V sub K, where I sub K represents the measured current running through the resistor, and V sub K represents the corresponding voltage drop across that resistor. Recall, we want to minimize the total squared air between the modeled output V of IK and the collected output V of K. To this end, we set up the total squared air function E sub 2, which is a function of R and B, given by the sum of the individual air squared, V of IK minus V of K. We can do some manipulation by just evaluating the function V at each input IK. And this sum we've seen, we can translate into the square of the two norm of A times X minus B. In this case, we have that A is the Vandermonde matrix that has seven rows and two columns seen here. X is the matrix with the coefficient B and R in its entries. And the right-hand side vector B is the set of all voltage output. We want to find the minimum value of our squared air function. In other words, we want to find the minimum over all x in R2 of the two norm of Ax minus b squared. To do so, recall the diagram used to visualize least squared techniques. We begin by drawing a plane to represent the span of the columns of A. Then we represent the vector B, which is not completely contained in the span. In this case, we connect the zero vector to the vector B, and we also draw the component of B that actually can be written as a linear combination of the columns of A. We call that component B hat. In other words, that is the projection of B onto the span of the columns of A. The difference between the output vector B and the projection vector B hat we call R, known as the residual vector. We want to find B hat in such a way that the residual vector is orthogonal to the span of the columns of A. Recall that we can write B hat as A times X for some unknown X because the entire idea of B hat was that it was some vector in the span of the columns of A. In other words, we could write B hat as A times X for some unknown value x. By definition, we knew that r was b hat minus b. By a theorem, we know that r 
is perpendicular to the span of the columns of A, R is perpendicular to B hat, if and only if A transpose times R is equal to zero. By definition of R, we know that we can rewrite this as B hat minus B. Continuing in this equation, we recall that B hat was A times X for some unknown X value because it was designed to be in the span of the columns of A. We then use distributivity of matrix multiplication over vector subtraction to distribute A transpose through the subtraction. We can bring the A transpose B over to the other side of the equal sign. This matrix A transpose times A is very famous. It's called the Gram matrix. And it's worth noting the dimensions of this equivalent linear systems problem. Notice that the matrix A is M by N. That means A transpose is N by M. A transpose times B would then be an N by one vector. X is an N by one vector. In this specific problem, N is two. A is M by N. A transpose is N by one, which means the Gram matrix is an N by N matrix. This is square, which is exciting because we've studied square matrices. By another theorem, the Gram matrix A transpose times A is invertible if and only if the columns of A are linearly independent. As we will see, for the data that we've collected, our corresponding van der Waals matrix indeed has linearly independent columns, which means the system we're now trying to solve is a non-singular linear systems problem. We've just transformed our initial least squares problem into an equivalent non-singular linear systems problem. Known matrix A transpose times A times unknown vector X equals to the right-hand vector A transpose times B. This equation is known as the normal equation and is a very famous tool used to solve least squares problems. Let's go on to use our calculator to solve this linear systems problem. We look back at our data, the definitions are matrix, and grab our calculator. First, let's go to the matrix button and we'll edit the matrix A by declaring it a seven by two matrix. We then input the first column as all ones. We use our current data to input the second column to be the current running through the resistor for each data point. Then we check to see that the matrix that we stored is the same matrix that we desired to store. And that's by comparing the definition of the matrix with the first coordinates for each data point. Next, we store the input values for the vector B which are the individual corresponding voltages across the resistor that we can get looking at our table of values. We input each of these voltages and check that the vector that results is the same vector that we want to analyze. To solve the normal equation, we form matrix A transpose times A, take its inverse, and then multiply by A transpose times B, and this produces the matrix X, known as the least squares solution. We take this solution from our calculator to find parameters B and R from our original linear model for V sub I, and we form the line of best fit for this model given by V, v of I equal to R times I plus B. This is now the least square solution of the data interpolation problem, which comes from solving the associated linear systems problem known as the normal equations.